Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here bringing another awesome math video. This one on graphing a quadratic that's in vertex form. So you've probably graphed, um, you know, some quadratics, maybe in standard form. Um, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. You found the vertex, x-intercepts maybe. Um, but I think one of the most, um, the best way to graph a function is through a mapping rule. So that's why I like vertex forms, because it allows us to do a mapping rule. So um, this is vertex form here, for those of you who aren't familiar with it. Y is equal to A, X minus H squared plus K. So H and K, so your vertex of this guy is, that's a, that's a T there by the way, H, K. So that's the vertex of your quadratic. And your leading coefficient, just call it your LC, leading coefficient is A. So that allows you, knowing that is really great because, um, you know, that's the bonus of vertex form. You know your vertex right away. And you can kind of use your A value there if you want it to to be able to um, graph this guy. But I really prefer a mapping rule. And the reason I prefer a mapping rule is because I can change the function and use the exact same procedure every single time. So whether it's sine, cos, tan, uh, radical, log exponential function. Um, I can graph all those and not know a single thing about the, the type of function that they are, the shape that they're supposed to have. As long as I know the mapping rule and some type of base table, I'm good to go. So what we need to know to be able to graph this guy is the mapping rule. So um, the mapping rule we we'll use for a quadratic is a little bit simpler than if I had, say, um, you know, a radical or sine cos because um, we don't have like a horizontal stretch per se with a quadratic. We have a vertical stretch. So x, y goes to uh, translation. And then a, which is the, um, represents sort of the vertical stretch. Well, the absolute value of a is the vertical stretch. So those of you who might be wondering about that. Um, a, y, plus k. So that's my mapping rule. So um, those of you who, who may have seen a B parameter in this mapping rule, it usually goes in front of the X1 over B. I haven't put it in here because we don't really need to know it. So XY goes to X plus H comma AY plus K. So the base table we're going to use is the Y is equal to X squared table. So that's just a base quadratic with no transformations done to it. So XY negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Then all we're going to do is square each of these numbers. 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. So we're going to take this table, we're going to apply the transformations to it, and get a new table that's x plus h, a y plus k. And then that new table of values is going to be our thing that we graph. So we'll do an example and let's see how it goes. So this is an example. Graph y is equal to x plus 3 squared minus 4. So the first thing I like to do is uh, write out all my parameters. So a, that's what would be in front of the brackets here. It's just 1 right now, so I'll just leave it as 1. So h. So remember our general form is x minus h. So if this guy is plus, the only way to make that subtract sign in our general form go to plus if you had subtract a negative. So that means that this guy is actually negative 3. And my students remember this by just saying, well, if it's plus, I have to take the opposite because it's h. That's all you need to know. So really, whatever works for you, help you figure out that, it's really up to you. And my k value, it is what it is, negative 4. There we go. Subtract 4. So from this, now I can write my mapping rule. So remember your mapping rule. It's x, y goes to. So it's x plus h. So h is negative 3, so minus 3. a, y, so a is 1. I don't need to write it. y plus k, so minus 4. So we're going to take this table of values here. x, y, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Table of values is always the same regardless of the quadratic. 
doesn't matter if I change the vertex or the A value. That was overkill for the size of that, hey? It uh, doesn't matter if I change whatever. I keep that this same table for every single vertex form question that I do. And I'm going to transform that table using the mapping rule. So it's like a little machine that I put that table through, the mapping rule. And I usually write my mapping rule up in the columns of this guy. So it reminds me to make sure that I use this. So all I'm going to basically do is subtract 3 off each of these x values. So I end up with negative 2 subtract 3 is negative 5. Negative 1 subtract 3, negative 4. So I'm see where this is going. Negative 3, negative 2. Let me change the size of this eraser before I erase this guy. And then negative 1. And that's it. No? Did I miss one? I forgot negative 2. Oh, of course I did. Here we go. Negative 2 and negative 1. So that's a negative 3 here. All right. So let me fix that up. Got to keep it neat. Here we go. All right. So now I do the same thing to the Y. So that's a 4. Um, so it's 4 subtract 4 is 0. 1 subtract 4 is negative 3. And 0 subtract 4 is negative 4. 1 subtract 4 is negative 3. 0. So you can see, guys, you get sort of a repetition. 0, negative 3, negative 4, negative 3, 0. So this middle guy right here, that is the vertex of my function. So that would be what your h and k values are, right? So you can do a quick check and see. So negative 3, negative 4, that's your h and k values right there. Always the middle of your vertex, of your table of values, sorry. All right, so let's graph this guy and see what it looks like. So go negative 3. I usually like to put the vertex on first. It just gives me a central location sort of I can go to. So negative 3, negative 4. Hopefully I'm getting this in the right location here, guys. I'm like a mile away from my computer here. Um, negative 3, negative 4. And then I'll start up to the top here. So negative 5 and 0 right there negative 4 and negative 3 looks about right there and now I got negative 2 negative 3 so again it should be a mirror image here so it should be really really close and then negative 1 and 0 looks like that and that's it and that you can sort of see the shape of it right so now that I have that done, I can go ahead and fill in the rest. I, mean, I can't tell you how hard this is using a pen tablet. And remember your graph should be a curve, not a V shape. So make sure you draw it curve-like. And there you go. There's my quadratic. So I just graph that vertex form using a mapping rule. It works every single time. doesn't matter what your H, K, or A values are. Just be careful. The only thing I caution you about is the sign of this H. If it's plus a number, then the H is negative. If it's minus a number, then the H is positive. So guys, I hope this video helped you find out, uh, figure out how to graph vertex form. It's really useful. Don't avoid it because when you get to pre-calculus 12, um, chances are you're going to be graphing sine, cos, tan, log, and exponential function a radical this with the exact same process so if you can master this process now it makes it so much easier when you get to uh, other functions and that's why it's so useful because you've learned one technique and you apply it now in every single chapter in pre-calculus 12 and that allows you to you know get better marks alright hopefully this helps and I'll see you guys in class thanks for watching